Three, two, one. Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 387, the episode that followed 386, which was recorded just moments ago in this very studio. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. And today's April 18th, 2018. Now, for the first time in like 10 episodes, I'm actually going to talk about the first thing written on the top of the list. It's called the like, share, subscribe story. Uh, you guys get, you need to help us out here. If you could click like on Facebook and like on uh, the YouTube channel, it will kind of self-promote the, the, uh, the show a little bit more in the channel. And if you could promote us by sharing with your friends, your colleagues, your bishops, your archbishops, that would help us a lot as well. The most important thing you can do is click subscribe. I'm getting emails now because people have noticed I've stopped sending out the email. Uh, after every episode, I get on my little uh, email program and send out an email to everybody. Well, that stopped working because nobody has been updating with their new emails. So this would just go to uh, no account somewhere and that's called, called spam. And so Gmail put me into spam, Yahoo put me into spam, and it's very difficult to get out of that. So hit the subscribe button. You'll get an email from uh, YouTube telling you, hey, there's a new show. Go watch it. And we also post on our Facebook page. Um, George and I were talking before the show, and there's not a lot of big national stories out there. Uh, okay, Barbara Bush died. That's an Episcopal story. Uh, she's going to be buried in, in Texas somewhere, right? St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston. They've been parishioners there since the 50s. Mm -hmm. biggest, that's the biggest uh, Episcopal story. However, there's lots of small stories. And one of this uh, part of the small stories is George and I have noticed uh, since the, the ACNA break with the, the Episcopal Church that there's a, a sense of extremes. All the conservatives and moderates uh, pull out of the diocese or try to form a, uh, a new diocese or try to kick out the old uh, remnants and uh, the conservatives are in their camp and then the uber ultra liberals are in their camp and they're, they're left to uh, fend for what they have they have no money they're usually supported by the national church and they end up in our kook news uh, sections and we now have kook news sections because I noticed Texas there's a church down there that's gonna have trans gendered ministry to some people down there and I said yep kook George tell me a little about the story diocese of Fort Worth the Episcopal group uh, put out a press release saying that st. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Hearst Texas was beginning a transgendered counseling and ministry if you had a teenager who wanted to become a girl and they were a boy they could offer pastoral resources to help them make that transition now Kevin your point uh, I think is well taken. The Diocese of Fort Worth and the, Episcopal, and the Diocese of San Joaquin and the Episcopal Church in South Carolina essentially are kook central right now. Um, that basically, they're so small. Well, Fort Worth is so small. And the only people left after the split were those who were almost half dead and they didn't know what happened, or the nut jobs. And now the nut jobs are able to run the show and what was the phrase the lunatics are running the asylum yep that's what's happening in fort worth <laughs> well it's not just the lunatics it's the lunatic fringe the really left ubers that are uh left in charge and we you know we've seen this as it's getting worse and worse um we saw what happened in south carolina with the the judge we saw what's happening uh in san joaquin where it's not it didn't split down the middle it seems all the moderates and the conservatives uh went to the acna and what was left over is the the uber liberals um but 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 you know kevin uh, we do have to be fair this is a point you raised with me that i wasn't really that interested in but i think you're right there are some places that didn't need to split to be kooks didn't you tell me that beyonce is uh, performing yeah. uh, three shows daily at the grace cathedral in san francisco <sighs> diocese of california been kooks going way back yes. folks they don't need a split <laughs> they invented the kook <laughs> kookism <laughs> What's happening with Beyonce at the church? I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't read it. I couldn't. Yeah, I just couldn't. it's the Beyonce right now, right three. Um, so we've noticed this uh, kind of split happening, and uh, um, 
it, it's interesting news to, to talk about. Uh, but there's good news also, George. Uh, we got an uh, announcement from a CFA that they are forming the Anglican Church in Brazil. Before we can talk about Recife, we need to talk about the Southern Cone because um, it's uh, led by uh, Greg Venables. Let's explain the Southern Cone. Southern Cone are the uh, churches, the Anglican Communion, in basically the northern part, Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, uh, are part of the Episcopal Church, Province 9. Uh, Brazil is its own province, and then everybody else is a part of the Iglesia uh, Anglicana right. del Southern Cone, Cono <laughs> del Sur. Del. <laughs> and the, uh, uh, that province has grown, and they're uh, discussing dividing between, because Peru now has three bishops, because they're going to be splitting soon, mm -hmm. Chile's doing well, and having, in essence, sort of an east-west. Uh, so have Argentina, Paraguay, uh, Uruguay in one camp, and the others in the other camp. Uh, Southern Cone's conservative, conservative evangelical, and it's a very small church numerically, uh, and it was in a region that was long hostile to Protestants. But in recent years, it's done quite well, as has uh, the former Diocese of Recife in the Anglican Episcopal Church Brazil, which in 2004, if everybody remembers, left the Anglican Episcopal Church and sort of like the Diocese of South Carolina floated out there. Uh, until Gafcon got off the got off the ground in two thousand and eight. Now Recife initially provided uh, cover, but now it's had sort of Gafcon Primates Council cover, but now it's going to be its own province. Recife also uh, sued for the properties and lost. Yeah, well, actually, no. The Episcopal Church of Brazil sued for the properties and won. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. And but that but Recife, I. The Anglican Episcopal Church of Brazil does not release statistics on membership. The last time they did, they included all baptized people, including dead people. So their numbers are worthless. And at this stage, uh, Miguel, Bishop Miguel Ochoa of Recife has added 35 congregations over the past 8 to 10 years. Wow, that's fantastic. And I wouldn't put it past them to be larger. Because before the split, his parish in, I think, in Pernambuco, was the largest Anglican church in Brazil. So it's we're going to have sort of an ACNA tech situation in Brazil for the Archbishops of Canterbury, but in this case, where tech is uh, bigger but declining and ACNA is smaller but growing, I think uh, this is a harder call for what, no, it's not a hard call at all. We know exactly what Welby's gonna do, it's, but if he were a just honorable Hard person, call. <laughs> We know exactly what Welby's going to do. Uh, but, you know, Recife's doing just great. Now, in the pre-show, you told me there's a, uh, a South... Uh, there's a YouTube channel uh, with these... Uh, uh, that involves the church we down are there. Not, we are not the largest Anglican YouTube channel. I hate to tell you that, Kevin. I'm sorry. We're the largest news. Yeah, your news. But the largest daily YouTube is a ministry run out of Recife, 10,000 viewers a day. Oh, my gosh. For worship. Uh, it's in Portuguese, so they're not really competition for us. No, no. But, but th this new Recife province is younger. Mm -hmm. It's less white than the Anglican Episcopal Church sure. Brazil. It's more dynamic. Uh, and it's also beginning to assume oversight of churches in the Episcopal Diocese of Colombia and in Central America. And it's done it without any money. Uh, pumped into it from outside. Anglican Episcopal Church Brazil receives cash from 815. That's how they funded their lawsuits. Uh, Miguel Ochoa didn't get any money that I'm aware of no. uh, from ACNA. And I contacted Peter Jensen, the chairman of GAFCON, and said, okay, are you going to invite Miguel Ochoa to the Primates Council? What is its exact relationship? And he said, we're meeting right now in Uganda, so I can't answer any of your questions. Well, that makes sense. I mean, first of all, they're all traveling to the middle of nowhere in the Uganda, um, and I've not seen any reports out of this this primates meeting. Uh, Archbishop Greg Venables posted a picture, so I'm I'm interested to see what they say, and uh, I would certainly like to to welcome a new province to the team. Uh, one more thing, I this is our second recording. I don't remember if in this recording we talked about donations yet for. Uh, no, we'd have. 
Okay, well, in this recording, we need to talk about donations for General Convention. Um, we used to all go. I remember I went to the 2006 one and uh, the one after that in California. It's a lot of fun to go to General Convention, except that's where all the kooks go. So I no longer go. <laughs> we now just send George, who has a, an affinity and a love for kooks. Um, you've gone to how many conventions now? Seven or eight. I can't I, remember. I know. So we're going to send you to Austin in July. July. And friends, I need to buy a copy of the DSM-4, the psychiatric manual, because it would help me sort of diagnose some of the people I'm going to meet there. Yes. <laughs> so. it, is a, it is a remarkably unpleasant place. Yeah. Because um, you see sort of the aggressive uh, side of the liberal movement. Um that you know it's just remarkable how unpleasant and unkind and unchristian some of these people can be in their behavior but it's also a wonderful news opportunity you remember the oh, i think it was the last one the one where Catherine jeffrey shorey said that you know we're not saved individually god does, you don't have a personal relationship with jesus you only yeah. have a collective one mm -hmm. you don't really matter it's the team uh, you know you, you know when Catherine jeffrey shorey ran the show there was always good copy the, and there's always, not as interesting. And there's always a contest between you and Jeff Walton, who's going to get the first picture of the transgendered bathroom to post online. Well, uh, he's won every single time, so I wouldn't put any bets on me. No. But, uh, so we need to raise money. Go to anglican.tv forward slash donate. Um, wait till I put up the link for the uh, general convention one. Right now it says Israel. I think we're covered for Israel. Um, other than that, uh, any other news out there, George? I think we're all covered. <laughs> Let's see, we talked about Beyonce, we huh. talked about transgender yeah. Fort Worth, we talked about Recife, uh, what else is out there? Oh, uh, the Nigeria and the Commonwealth, is that of interest to uh, people? We, we got... Uh, corruption Gav in India. Uh, <laughs> Gavin and I talked about some of that, and uh, I think we're all good now. Okay. All right. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 387 of Anglican Unscripted.